Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fourth World Cup of the 2023-2024 season. And this weekend we have arrived in Poland, in the city of Tomaszu Mazowiecki in the Arena Lodowa. I hope I pronounced that somewhat correctly. Polish is a difficult language. Today we have for you four distances. The first of the women's 500 meters, then followed by the 1000 meters men, then the 3000 meters for women, and then we have as the spectacle at the end, the mass start for men. It's gonna be a very exciting Friday evening. Some very explosive races. In a few minutes, at uh, 30 minutes past the hour, we're going to start with the women's 500 meters. And here we see the World Cup standings for those. Aaron Jackson is leading with 271 points. Another American, Kimmy Guts, in second place. Minson Kim, the Korean, in third place. Then three Dutch skaters, a Chinese skater, and three Japanese skaters. All very orderly. And here we have the pairs. Morozova in the A division, not something I thought I'd see, but she skated very well last week. Michelle de Jong, it's her first World Cup race of the season. Then the wrong flag for the Norwegian skaters, that's the Polish flag. Someone made a little mistake there. Here I do think we have the correct flags with Jackson versus Kim in the final pair. We're very close together uh, at the World Cup race last week, where Kim won with 37.73 and Jackson placed second with 37.75. And those would be roughly the times we can expect today in the top as well, considering that Thomas Hu. Um, is known for not having the fastest ice. Of course, that's all fine as long as it's equal for everyone participating, which presumably it will be. If we look at the 10 fastest times ever skated on the 500 meters in this rink, it's quite a new rink, it not, does not have a long history. Um, in 2018, we had the first World Cup here. The track record is currently held by Erin Jackson who we will see in the final pair today. 37.55. She also holds the second fastest time. We see a couple of times now. Gradaira, twice Vanessa Herzog, and the 10th fastest time. So to go into the top 10, you have to skate 37.96 or faster. And here we go with the first pair. We just heard the whistle. Nerezda Morozova against Michelle de Jong. If you would guess a Kazakh skater in the A division, it would most likely be Aydova or Daranova. But those aren't here today. So instead we're seeing Nadezda Morozova, who is more of a 1500 meter specialist. And here we have Michelle de Jong. Um, she did not qualify for the World Cups, but Jutta Leerdam isn't here today, so Michelle de Jong is in her place. And, last week in a training competition in Heerenveen, Michelle de Jong skated the first 100 meters, her opener, of 10.49 seconds. Which, as far as I've been able to find, is her fastest ever. So she should have the advantage at the start over Morozova here. And we definitely see that as well. We have no times. I do see them in the stadium, but I can't quite make out what they are. But it is clear on this crossing that De Jong is going to easily win the race. As expected, if you look at their personal bests, it's about, it's about a second difference. Let's hope we do get a final time. We do! 38.52 for De Jong and 39.14 for Morozova. Especially for Morozova, that's uh, quite a good time. Not quite as fast as last week, but uh, 
a lot faster than she was earlier. And Michelle de Jong, we have only seen in Heerenveen, where she was faster, but it's a much faster ring, so it's hard to compare against anything. But with 38.52, if you look at last week in Stavanger, you would have been around 8th, 9th with that. So, just in the top 10. Here we have two Norwegian skaters. The Norwegian sprint is not doing very well for the women. Um, so to see two Norwegian skaters in the A division is really good. Julie Nistad Samsonsen against Martina Ripsrud. Their personal bests are almost identical. And Samsonsen has been skating a little bit faster every World Cup so far. So can she break the 39 second barrier for the first time in the World Cup this season? So far they look about equal. Ripsrud has a slight lead, 1077 to 10.96. So 1700 of, uh, behind Michelle de Jong. So she opened 1060, we can now now. And it is indeed Ripsrud who does my apologies, that's Samsonson who does take the race. Who skates a much faster lap because she lost a bit in the opener. Oh, I got a little bit confused there. My bad. Uh, it's Rift Rudu 1, 39.18. And Samsonson with um, 39.82. Next up, we have Sarah Warren against Martina Baran. Baran is on a hot streak, the Polish skater. Because last week she skated under 39 seconds for the first time ever. Personal best, 38.98. Sarah Warren's PB is a little bit faster, 38.24. And on low altitude rings, also 38.51. She came close to that quite a few times uh, this season already. And so far Warren has a slight lead. And the opener will be 10.64, 10.79. Those are good openers. Second fastest of the day. For now, for Sarah Warren. And considering the earlier results in the World Cup, Warren does have the advantage in this race. And he does win this one as well, it looks like, but with a very small difference. 38.9 and 39.23 for Warren and Baron, respectively. That's for both roughly what we've seen this season so far. They've been a little bit faster, they've been a little bit slower. So it's in the line of, uh, of their level. In fact, this will be Baran's best result in the World Cup so far, because he's either been B group or lost in the A group, and she's not lost today. Right, in this race we have Angelica Wojcik, Polish skater, against Carolina Hiller, the Canadian skater. With, if everything works, a blazing fast first 100 meters. Same goes for Wojcik, by the way. She's opened 10.24 two years ago, which is ridiculously fast. She doesn't, uh, she's not quite back at that level yet. 
and Hiller does have a slight advantage, but Wojcik is closing the gap and taking the advantage. 10.55, 10.63, those are good openers. Wojcik fastest of the day. And it does look like she's uh, she has a big lead now. You don't see it very often with Wojcik skates without glasses. Some skaters do that, most don't. And Wojcik skates 38.16 and 38.69 for Hiller. That's by far the fastest in the World Cup this season so far for Wojcik. Very good race, very good race. Well done. And for Hiller, 38.6, that's what she skated the last two World Cup races. So very consistent. Two Dutch skaters, Naomi Verkerk, the surprise of the season, against Diona Voskamp. My bad. Uh, no, I got that right. Here she is, Jona Voskamp. Voskamp is again known for very fast openers. Skated 10.3 a couple of times already on a few different rinks. Has not quite been able to do that in the World Cup yet this year. And usually has a bit of trouble with the lap. She is a pure sprinter. And we do see that immediately she takes the advantage. 10.52 to 10.76. 10.76 isn't bad, but 10.52 is a lot faster. But it all comes down to the lap. Can she pull through? She still does have the advantage, but you can, you can do a lot in that last 100 meters. Voskamp in the lead, on the inner lane, and it looks like she will keep that lead, yes she does, 38.47 for Voskamp, 38.54 for Naomi Verkerk. Voskamp skates the exact same time as she did last week, and Verkerk is a little bit faster. So far we have in the lead Angelica Wojcik, 38.16, then three Dutch skaters, all around 38 and a half seconds. Then Hiller, Warren, Mrozeva, and so on. So, time to beat for anyone to come, 38.16. Rio Yamada against Vanessa Herzog. Japan against Austria. Herzog has done really well, world champion 2019, it's quite a while ago. Olympic Games, she can do it really well. Not the best yet this season though. Although in the Olympic season she also did not have a great build up, but this skates fantastically at the Olympics, so anything's possible. And they're very even. Herzog is taking ever so slightly a lead. 10.68 to 10.80 for Yamada. Both have been faster. And a little bit of draft for Herzog, which is the advantage, but then you do get the inner turn at high speed, which is a little bit of a disadvantage because it's a little bit more difficult, especially for men as their speeds are higher. Herzog does have the lead, quite a big one at that. And skates 38.54. And 39.02 for Yamada. This is Yamada's slowest race in the World Cup so far. 
So I don't, I don't think she'll be too happy with this. Although it depends. If she wasn't feeling that great, who knows, then this might be really good. Or it's, it's about in line what she did earlier. 38.4 last week, 38.7 before that, now 38.5. So it's what we and she could expect. Two more Japanese skaters. Kurumi Inagawa against Yukino Yoshida. Yoshida skated under the 38 second mark uh, at the very first World Cup race. Has not been able to do that again. And that was a personal best. And Inagawa placed sixth, sixth at the first three World Cup races. So she does have a lot of experience with skating top Go 10. To the start. And we have Inagawa in the inner lane, Yoshida in the outer lane with the red band. Ready. And Inagawa is taking a slight lead. 10.53, 10.55. Those are amazing openers. The two fastest of the day. Japanese skaters again. Japanese skaters are always have a lot of people that can open very quickly. But then it comes down to the lap. And Inagawa still has a slight lead. A very slight lead. 38.6 and 38.73. It is sixth and eighth place so far. Definitely not bad. And then we have arrived at the final three pairs. Wojcik is still um, in first place. Which means that she got at least 7th place, and that's her best result this far, uh, this season, so far. Her first top 10 spot. So she's improving throughout the season, which is very nice. Kimmy Guts against Femke Koch. Kimmy Guts won uh, the very first World Cup race. Femke Kok won the second, both in Obihiro. And Guts has placed top four on all of them. Uh, Kok didn't, because uh, in Beijing she was a little bit ill, skipped the first one, did race the second one, but did not give it her all to save herself. She still skated so she could get some World Cup points and stay in the A division. But outside of uh, that one, she skated top three every time. That looked a little bit like a false start from Cock to me, but starter lets it go. And Cock has a little bit of a lead. Well, no, they're about even. The slightest of leads, 10.52 to 10.57. And Cock closes the gap, has now the inner turn, the shortest drive to the finish. And has quite a big lead over Kimmy Guts and Femke Cox skates. 37.95 into the top 10 she goes. That is the ninth fastest time ever skated here. And the fastest time ever skated on this rink by a Dutch skater. Kimmy Guts 38.45 goes into third place. So white cheek at least top six. We have two more pairs to go. And here we have Marit Fladeres in the outer lane against the ruining Xian in the inner lane from China. Ladeiras, not flashy, but very steady this season. 
top 10 every single race. And Ruinen Kian started in the B division because she took a year off last year. Um, but after that, she also skated top 10 every race. Go to the start. But both haven't come further than fifth place yet. Ooh, false. Who gets it? False start, out the lane, too slow in position. Keep moving. Ah, that was Michelle de Jong. Yeah, she did make a little bit of a movement. Well, if anyone does it again, doesn't matter who. They're out. And they're off, without any issues. Good. Jan has a slightly, is known for opening fast, has to open 10 2 before. 10 5. The tight fastest of the day, and 10 7 9 for Fladeris. Fladeris does usually have the better lap, though. So will she have it again today? Jan still has a little bit of a lead, but Marit Vladeris has closed in the gap and taken over that lead with 38.52 and 38.68 for Ruining Tian. Vladeris goes into 5th place, Tian goes into 10th place. One more pair to go. And in that pair we have two skaters who have both skated a top 10 time here. We have Aaron Jackson, Indiana Lane, who has the track record of 37.55. Against Minson Kim who won five World Cups last season, had a little bit of a slow start this season, but did win the last World Cup. And Jackson has uh, won two World Cups. This season so far. And is uh, leading the pack, of course, leading the, uh, the World Cup standings. Jackson with a down start. And looks like she has a good start. She always had a very incredibly high rhythm. And it works. What will the opener be? 10.47, fastest of the day. That's the Aaron Jackson we know. And 10.54 for Vincent Kim. That's for her also very good. Kim does look like she, yeah, she got closer and she took a lead, a fairly significant lead at that. She will win this race, but will she win this event? And she does, 37.82. Minson Kim win, wins her second World Cup in a row. Aaron Jackson goes into fourth place with 38.17. And that means that, quite surprisingly, we have the Polish skater Angelika Wojcik on the podium. Hemke Kok second place, that's not that surprising. He's been doing well the entire season. But I'm quite surprised to see Angelika Wojcik uh, on the podium. It's very nice. And in her, in, on her home ring. In her home country. It's a really, uh, very nice thing for all the spectators there. Because I presume they're mostly Polish. They are actually building a new rink. Uh, well, building a roof on an existing rink. Two existing rings. They already have done quite a lot of work in Zakopane in Poland. It's high altitude. And they're also going to build a roof 
uh, which has recently been announced on the one in Tarstegni, the one in Warsaw, the capital. Here we see Kim, first place, Kok, Wojcik, Jackson, Guts, Voskamp. Five Dutch skaters in the top ten. That's a very high level. And Hertzog in ninth place. And then here we have the second page. Morozova, 17, which for her is quite good. Norwegian skaters, 18th and 20th. That's about what we could expect from them. And that was the 500 meters. Here we have the World Cup standings. Jackson is still in first place. Um, but Gus did not have her best race today. And Kim won, so Kim over to Gus and goes into second place. Then after that, maybe they've changed a little bit, they've swapped around, but it's still three Dutch skaters, one Chinese and three Japanese skaters. And uh, there will be no ice preparation. There will be after the 1000 meters map, but not in between. So in eight minutes, We'll start with the 1000 meters men. Here we have the rankings for the 1000 meter men. Keltmaus is in first place, then Zhong Yang Ning, and three Japanese skaters, a Norwegian Lorentzen, another Japanese skater, they're very good. They haven't won yet, well they won the first one actually. They haven't won too much, but the breadth of how many skaters there have, very broad, the level there. Here we have the pairings, Hendrik Dombeck against Hein Speer, Stoppelmoor, Kojima, Stolt very early on, Cooper McLeod, Connor Howe against Vincent Deatre, Maurice Klein against Lee, the Italian Boza against 
Tim Prince, the 19-year-old De Bow against the Polish skater in his home ring, Chirac, and Ning Shinama, Yamada Lorentzen and Nonomura against the winner of the first World Cup, Masaya Yamada. Kjeld Nice is not here, as you may have noticed. Um, he's sick. Again. He was sick a little bit before um, the Dutch qualification. He did get better in time to qualify. And unfortunately, he's sick again. So he cannot compete. We will, I believe, not see him the entire weekend. And I do wish uh, all the best to him. Get better as quickly as possible. He won two World Cups, so he's definitely in a good level. To give you a bit of an indication of what you can expect, the track record is held by Wesley Dice with 108.52. Jordan Stoltz has the second fastest time, 108.64, and then the rest of the top 10 ends at 108.98. So basically under 109 is a top 10 time. Now, we had a B division where the track record holder Wesley Dice did skate and won with 109.44, which is quite a bit behind his track record. His level this season is also not yet what it was when he skated the track record. So it's to be expected that it's a little bit slower. Matthias Voste, Belgian skater, was third. And Peter Kongshoek, a Norwegian skater who uh, didn't even is not even really a 1000 meter specialist. Is what uh, third after Voste and Dice. In two minutes, we'll see the first race. Now we have Jordan Stoltz. The question is still, will Jordan Stoltz skate the World All-Round or the World Sprint, or both? They are held in the same weekend, but on different days. The Sprint will be on uh, Thursday and Friday, and the All-Round the two days after that in the weekend. And Stoltz has already alluded to the fact that he kind of wants to skate both. But in a podcast uh, that I watched two days ago, he did also... Say, uh, he might not want to do the sprint because it would affect his uh, all rounds. I do think it's very exciting that Jordan Stoltz, Jordan Stoltz a world class sprinter, wants to skate the world all round. You don't see that very often. Evan Venemars did it in uh, 2007 and actually came in fifth. And Hedda Bergsma did it in 2015. Came in, I believe, fourth or fifth. Quite good as well. It's always great to see when uh, sprint skaters skate the all around to gain a lot on the short dist distances and then try to defend that lead on the longer distances. They rarely win, but they can skate, uh, they can get them in a good position, like fifth or sixth or something like that. Here in the first race, we have. Hendrik Dombeck against Hein Otterspeer. And Hendrik Dombeck has been very, uh, has made very great strides, mostly on the 1500 meters, but also did skate a new low altitude personal best on the 1000 meters. Low altitude personal best to be distinguished because on high altitude there's less air pressure, so you go a lot faster. So to have something useful to compare again, we to compare against, we take the low altitude personal best. Which he skated in Beijing this season. Against Hein Otterspeer, the oldest of this, uh, of this group with 35 years of age. This is his first World Cup on 1000 meters. He's already skated the 500, but not yet the 1000, because he did not qualify. But since a few other Dutch skaters aren't here, he's allowed to skate. 
So what can you expect from the openers? Heinold Spears, 16.6, 16.7. Hendrik Dombek, about the same. Dombek has, well, a very slight lead, 16.72, 16.73 from Walter Speer. For reference, a very fast would be 16.2, 16.3. On the slow side would be about a second slower than that. So this is roughly in the middle. Walter Speer takes the lead, skates a faster first lap. 25.3 to Dombeck's 25.8. Now, Walter Speer is known for quite good final lap, not the best, but still quite good. And Dombeck is good on the 1500 meters, so should be able to pump out a good last lap. Oh, Walter Speer almost fell down there, but does manage to stay up. And Dombeck is getting very close, but is not quite able to close the gap. No, Otter Spear does win this one. 109.8 and 109.92 from Dombeck. Dombeck has the faster final lap. Lost a little bit too much in that first lap, though. And in the next pair, we have American skater, Zach Stoppelmore, against the Japanese canon Ryota Kojima. Zach Stoppelmore, unfortunately, was lost in the previous week because he fell, which is a thing that happens. He luckily did not uh, fall down to the B division. He's still here with us in the A division. Against Ryota Kojima. Who placed ninth in the first World Cup, did not skate the second and was second in the B division last World Cup. So climbed his way back into, a, into the A division. And again, uh, Stoppelmore, another American like Jackson with the down start, which we don't see a lot anymore. But some still do prefer it. Kojima has a slight lead at the start. 16.66, 16.79 Stoppelmore. Roughly the same as uh, the last pair. Otterspeer did skate a good first lap, but then lost quite a bit in the second lap. So that's where these skaters can uh, can win some. Can win a few very, very valuable tens of seconds. But they also do on the first lap. Kojima is faster than Otterspeer. 25.3 and 25.49 for Stoppelmore. Who is not much slower, behind, uh, not much behind Otterspeer at the moment. And it all comes down to this final turn, and Kojima does maintain his lead, quite significantly so, and goes into the lead as well. 109.73 and 110.54 from Stoppelmore. Stoppelmore goes into fourth place. And now, the moment a lot of you might have been waiting for. Jordan Stoltz against Cooper McLeod. The reason we see Stoltz so early is because he skipped the second World Cup. Uh, placed third podium in the first one, did not skate the second, and then won the B group last week. But also the fastest time of the day. So, the track record is 108.52. And we're all thinking, can Stoltz do that? Can he beat that? He's just 19 years old. Triple world champion already. It looks like 
he's been skating with us for many years, but he hasn't. He's just 19. Cooper McLeod, also still only 22. And McLeod should be no match for Stoltz here. Stoltz can open very fast if he's in a good shape. 16.1 is what he did at the World Championships last season. He does take a little bit of a lead here as well. 16.41 and 16.5 for McLeod. 16.41, that is really good. And so is 16.5. Ken Stoltz skate the lap under 25 seconds. He doesn't need to necessarily to win. But if he does, that would be phenomenal. On this ring. 25.2, fastest so far. 25.3 for McLeod, very good as well. And this does give Stoltz the ideal draft on this crossing for this final lap. Although he does have to go to the inside a little bit early to not be delayed. Track record 108.52. Can Stoltz beat that? And his time is 108.64. Exactly the same as his fastest time here. He obviously easily goes into uh, first place with over a second difference. And it's a very good time. Cooper McLeod 110.09. Uh, so this is shared, tied for the second fastest time ever skated here. Uh, tied with himself. We do have a lot of great skaters coming up though. So while we can be reasonably sure that Stoltz is good for a podium spot, the gold, yeah, a lot can happen. Two Canadians, Connor Howe against Vincent De Hetre. De Hetre um, still holds the Canadian record. Connor Howe is more of a 1500 meters man. But does skate really good 1,000 meters on occasion. He skated incredibly fast on both distances at the um, Fall Classic all the way back in September this year. We have Hau on the inner lane and De Hetre in the outer lane. If you want to know which is which, just look at the size of the legs. No one has them as big as De Hetre. 17.17 from De Hetre, 17.31 for Hau. This is what these skaters do. has a really good draft there and definitely skates a faster first lap and takes a lead twenty five point seven four and twenty six point zero zero they'll have to skate a miraculous final lap to skate a good time because these are by far the slowest split times um, of the day how even above 43 seconds. And how does close the gap a little bit, but doesn't quite manage to win. 1.010.44 for De Hetre and 1.010.62 from How. The final laps are good, but not good enough to get near the podium. How, even though he skated this very well at the Fall Classic, has not had the best World Cup season yet. But there are still the second half. Ultimately, that's where you get the prizes. 
These are just World Cups, as they say. Moritz Klein in the inner lane against the Estonian skater, Martin Liev. There are not a lot of Estonian skaters, so naturally Liev does have the national record. Um, but Moritz Klein does have the low altitude national record for Germany as well. Both skaters skated top 10 before in this season. So their level is good. And Daryl. These are not the fastest openers, but also not the slowest. So 16.6, 16.7, roughly what we can expect. There we are. 16.70 for Martin Liev and 16.82 for Klein. A little bit behind Stolt, but Stolt did open up very fast. Liev does skate a good first lap and takes a lead from, uh, from Klein. 25.55 and 25.65 for Klein. Quite a bit behind Stoltz, but then again, that's expected because that's Jordan Stoltz. Not entirely fair to compare to that. But we go about second place. The time to beat is 109.73. Can they beat that? And Klein does actually win the race. No, they're tied. 109.97. I think Klein was ever so slightly ahead. I'm not sure. We'll They'll have to look at the thousands of uh, a second, the milliseconds. Which they might be still tied at, who knows. But if I saw that correctly, Klein was ever so slightly ahead. Maybe we'll get to see that again. But that's not up to me. All I can say is that for both skaters, that's a time they've skated before in the World Cup. Yeah, there we go. Ooh, Klein's time has been corrected to 109.96. I thought the difference was bigger than a few thousands, and this proves that. Right, David Boza against the very young Tim Prince, who is just 20, uh, 20 years old, and Boza is 31. Tim Prince, against all odds, won the Dutch qualifying event on the 1000 meters, with a fantastic personal best in Heerenveen of 107.96, and has skated well in the World Cups. These are his first time skating World Cups with the seniors. And was 12, 8, and 9. Which is very good uh, for someone who's just 20 years old for the first time World Cup. David Boza has a lot more experience, has also skated top 5 already. Both 16.76. Bozza almost skated an Italian low-altitude national record uh, in the first World Cup, was just one hundredth of a second away from that. So his shape is good. Twenty-five point three for Prince and twenty-five point four six for Bozza. Again, it comes down to the final lap. A lot of skaters have trouble with that final lap here today. Which kind of makes sense, because it's a bit of a slower rink, and that is what you see there. Oh, Bozza has a lot of trouble keeping that up. And Prince does win the race, but with what time? 110.10 and 110.35. Both above 28 seconds, that's where they lose it a lot. We've had 6 of 10 pairs, 4 more to go. 
in first place. Obviously still Jordan Stoltz, but over a second. In second place, still Ryota Kojima. And in third place, Hein Speer. So a little bit of a reminder, time to beat for second place is 109.73. And the next two skaters should be able to do that. They have the ability to. In the inner lane, Yenning the Bow, just 19 years old, ex short tracker, then turned to the long track last season and turned out to be rather good at that. And he's skated top 10 every World Cup. And this is his first World Cup season ever. So it's very good. Against home favorite Damian Chirek, who uh, placed fourth in the last World Cup. Very good. And skated, if I remember correctly, the fastest lap of everyone. Yenning the Bow skated by far the fastest lap at the Dutch qualifier, so both can skate a really good lap. Sixteen point four one for Tudek, sixteen point five six for the Bow. Those are very good openers, and the Bow skates very good turns, which is what you get when you uh, put a short track skater on long track, because those short track turns are very very tiny. Jurek closes the gap on the crossing and knocks over a little pylon there. I'm not sure if that's going to have consequences. It might. Either way, 25.25. That's a very fast first lap. And 25.5 for Yenning the Bow. And here you can see them both tire very, very quickly. That's what you get on the 1000 meters. Chirek does maintain his lead. And he goes into fifth place. 109.94. And the bow goes into 12th place. 1104.49. For the bow, that's definitely not what he hoped for. He's been a lot faster in previous three World Cups. Perhaps all the traveling and the press and the light and the audience and all that stuff has caught up to him a bit. Maybe he's a bit tired. I would be. I think it's my first World Cup season. And he's just 19 years old. Sure, Jordan Stoltz is also 19 year old, but you can't compare people to Stoltz, that's not fair. Most people are not top of the world at 19 years old. It usually takes quite a few years to go from being top of the juniors when you're 18 or early 19 to go to top of the world. Anyway, Zong Yang Ning, Chinese skater on the inner lane against the Japanese Tatsuya Shinahama. And Shinahama has skated better and better every race. Placed second in the previous World Cup. He's usually seen as a 500 meter specialist, but on occasion, and he's done it well, more than once already this World Cup, he can skate really good 1000 meters as well. With very good last laps, considering how fast he can be on that first, uh, on the opener as well. Ooh, I think I saw a little bit of a slip there from uh, Ning. Hopefully it doesn't cost him too much time. Ning, of course, a Chinese record holder. And Shinhama 16.51, Ning 16.77. Shinhama a little bit on the faster side, Ning will have to win it in the laps. Mostly the last one, that's his strong suit. He's also a very adept 1500 meter skater. 
And even though Shin Hama skates relatively good final laps, he is still ultimately a sprinter. He's got to have it from the first bit, mostly. 25.5 for both. I do favor Ning's position here. He does have a little bit of disadvantage compared to, compared to Shin Hama, but his final lap should be better. And you can see him giving all the power with a little bit of a draft that he has. And in this turn, he will close the gap and take the lead. And the final time will be 109.9 and 110.11 for Shinama. Interesting fact about Zhong Yang Ning, by the way. He is the fastest skater ever on both the 1000 and the 1500 meters to have never won a world championship medal. So I very much hope for him uh, that he's able to win one this season. His level is definitely there. He's already won several medals on both distances in the World Cup. Rather surprisingly, with three pairs to go, um, Kojima is still in second place with 109.73. Two pairs to go, actually. Kazuya Yamada, another Japanese skater, one of the Yamada brothers, against Havard Lorentzen. Havard Lorentzen is one of those skaters who is very good at um, skating well in the right moment. Usually his World Cups are good, but not the best. But then at the World Championships, he does something extra. Ready. Yamada was away from the line very fast there. Or Lorentzen was a bit slow, I'm not sure. The opener 17.79 for Yamada against 16.79 uh, for Yamada against 16.86 for Lorentzen. That's for Yamada a little bit on the slow side for Lorentzen. It's about what he does. His openers are not what they used to be. He has a lot of back problems. But his final laps are great. 25.67 for Lorentzen, 26.0 for Yamada. If you skate a lap above 26 seconds, let's be honest, you're not gonna win. It's not fast enough. And Yamaha does look like he has a good last lap, and he might still win this race. There is a few meters left. No, Lorentzen will win the race. 110.13 and 110.23 for Yamada. A little bit of a faster final lap from Yamada. Does win a little bit, but was not able to close the gap. Yamada skated podium last season. Uh, last season, last week, but doesn't make the top 10 this week, unfortunately. And uh, neither does Lorenz, even though he did play second uh, in the second World Cup in Beijing. Right, one more pair to go. Tayo Nonamura against Masaya Yamada. Nonamura very consistent. Sixth, fifth and sixth. Masaya Yamada not quite as consistent. He won the first World Cup. Then was 17 in the second World Cup. And last week was 10th. Which is a little bit better again. So Yamada definitely has it in him to be stalled today, but will he do it? And they're off. Nonomura in the inside lane, Yamada in the outside lane.
usually reasonably fast openers for the both of them. Uh, 16.7, it's about the average of what we've seen today. And Yamada does close the gap on the crossing and will probably come out of this turn with a lead. But he actually doesn't. Nonomura skates a much better turn and takes the lead. But those laps, 25.7, 25.8, that's not going to happen. I would be very surprised if these two men would be able to take the top 10 still. My apologies, the podium. Top 10 is definitely still possible. And it is Nonomura who wins the race with a time of 1.10.19 and 1.10.30 for Yamada. Which means that, fairly unsurprisingly, Jordan Stoltz wins with 108.64. But after that, a massive gap to 109.73 over a second difference that's it's happened before surely but that's almost unheard of 1.09 seconds difference Even in the World Championships 2020, when Pavel Kulichnikov won with a massive difference, it was a little bit smaller than this, a few hundred smaller. I can't recall any race, 1,000 meter race, at the top level of the world where the difference was larger. And after that, uh, after that 109.73, the it's very closely packed together. As we'll be able to see right here. On the 973, on the 980, 90, 92, 94, 96, 97, 1009, 1010. Two German skaters in the top seven, which is really good. The Japanese skaters are doing very well in the World Cup uh, standings, but did not do so great uh, today. Well, except for Kojima, second place. The other ones are not in the top 10. And Zong Yang Ning uh, still has the lead. No, takes the lead. Now he no longer has the lead. The Japanese skater still the top seven. Four of them stalled. Is uh, slowly climbing the ranks, but from missing one and having to skate in the B division, yeah, you lose a lot there. So he's not going to be able to win the World Cup. But he can win individual World Cup races, as he just did. So the difference between place one and place two is 1.09 seconds, is unheard of. But the difference between place two and place 20 is only 0 0.89 seconds, which is also, I assume, fairly unheard of, but in the other direction. Incredibly small difference. Very closely packed together. The difference between 14th place and podium, it's just half a second. They will be preparing the ice today, uh, well today, after this race. And at 43 minutes past seven local time, we will resume with the 3000 meters for women.
The prize giving ceremony for 500 meters swimming. The medals and prize will be presented by the IEC representative, Mr. Ron Espen, and the president of the Polish Swedish Skating Federation, Mr. Rafał Kakar. The third place and bronze medal representing Poland, Angelika Wojci.
in a few minutes, we'll start with the women's 3,000 meters. And in the lead in the World Cup standings is Ragne Wiklund with 168 points. That's not just uh, the 3,000 meters, because it's a long distance combination World Cup with also the 5,000 meters uh, added in. Which we had uh, last week in Stavanger. So for the pairs, I missed them on the screen, but uh, I have them written down here. We start with Elisa Dull against Lolle Brigida. Hall against Irene Schouten, very early again, a very good skater. Grunewald against Beune. The Chinese Yang against the Japanese Onodera. Then Horikawa against Magdalena Chichon. Then the leader, Ragne Wiklund against Ivani Blondin, Canadian skater. And long term favorite, not quite favorite anymore, but still very good, Martina Sablikova against Malte. And in the final pair, we will see Sanne in het Hof against Mei Han. And here we start with the first pair, Lolle Brigida against Dull. Lolle Brigida, Canadian, uh, our Canadian, Canadian, our Italian favorite, who took a year off to become a mom, and is now back on the ice. She did very well uh, last week. Last week was her first week. She started in the B division on the 1500, on the 5000. Promoted to the A division on both distances. So very good. And the openers ooh, are rather fast. 19.74, 19.86. So, for context, the track record here is. Um, 402.79 and to go into the top 10 you have to go to 406.61 first lap Lolle, Lolle Brigida starts with courage under 31 seconds 30.94 and Elisa Dull 31.85 so assuming an opener of 20 seconds is reasonable that's what most skaters are within half a second of laps of 31 get you to an incredibly fast time of 357 and a half laps of 32 which is what these skaters are skating now gets you to about 404 405 laps of 33 seconds get you to about 411 12. And I think that would be reasonable for these skaters here. At the last 3000 meters, um, Lolle Brigida did not skate. Dull skated 405.06. 32 and a half seconds for both now. And Dull does take a little bit of a lead. Lolle Brigida uh, began a lot faster. And is known for a good final lap. Not necessarily on its own, but if she's skating against someone. Lolle Brigida comes from the mass start. Does, has lost a lot now with 33.7, but she's from the mass start. So if she has someone to race against, then she can really pump out that amazing final lap. 
We had a B division, by the way, earlier today. Won by Mia Kilberg with 4-11. Second, Morozova, 4-10, the Kazakh skater. And the Norwegian Lovas with 4-16. Now, 33.2 for Dill, 33.9 for Lolle Brigida. Is still losing a little bit. She did begin very, very fast. Dill is keeping it a little bit more steady. Most women do tend to skate um, with faster lap at the start and then lose a little bit each lap throughout the race. Not all of them. 33.6 for Dull, 34, the first 34 seconds for Lolo. Lolo Brigida. Uh, like Irene Schouten is known for just skating a flat race instead of one that goes up. But most women do lose a little bit throughout the race every lap. And the finish of the first pair on this 3000 meters. Elisa Dull, just above 4.10. 4.10.09. And Lolle Brigida did take it down a little bit in the final lap. 4.11.64. And here in the second pair after this. We have one of the favorites um, to win this event, Irene Schouten, against Laura Hall, who is just 20 years old and is from Canada. Irene Schouten, uh, with her entire team, skipped the first World Cup, did not race there, then did race in the second World Cup in Beijing, where she became Olympic champion, skated. Well, let's just say what it is. It was a bad race. Uh, she confirms that herself. She has no idea why that happened. But it was just... It, she just couldn't make speed for some reason. And she had to skate in the B division on the 5K uh, last week. Where she won. And skated a new track record. So she's definitely very good again. And then she also won the mass start last week. So, what can Schouten do today? And what can the young Laura Hall do? Schouten does start off quite a bit faster. With 20.26. And 21.5 for Laura Hall. We should not expect Irene Schouten to win on Lolle Brigida on the first lap of Lolle Brigida started off very quickly with a 30.9 well, Although Schouten sometimes does that as well and then slows it down a bit in that second lap <laughs> 31.84 a cautious start she keeps this steady which she can do if she's in good shape then this is could be around a 403 maybe 402 that's just compared to the track record why not that was uh 123.09 Ooh, 124.69 Losing a second on that track record with 32.59. That's probably not going to happen now. Well, I was optimistic. Now the, the question is, can she keep it down, keep it level, keep it steady? She can. 
And Laura Hole, 34.1. Hout is known for keeping it very steady, but sometimes she has, she had one this season in Beijing, she had one last season in Calgary, unexplainably she just has not such a great race. Uh, but today does seem to be quite good. Not the absolute fastest, a little bit behind the track record, a few seconds, but 32.3, is very steady, gaining a little bit every lap, Laura Hall, 34.64. Two more laps to go. Thirty-two point seven eight loses a little bit again, but has now taken first place. Has virtually passed Elisa Dull. And thirty-five point two for Hall. Her first thirty-five second lap. One more lap to go, we're on to the bell, and for Schouten, again, 32.8. She's heading for a time of about 4.08, and Laura Holt, 36.00. It's not able to quite skate the time she did uh, last season, uh, earlier this season. 13 from Obihira, not quite. Alright, here we have Irene Schouten with the final time of 4.0774. She kept those laps very steady, but they weren't that fast. And I don't think she's gonna win with this today. She was one of the favorites after last week, but it does not look like she quite got that shape again this week. And 4.25.75 from Laura Hall. Well, we can see whether it can be done faster in the next pair. And in the next pair we have two more Dutch skaters. Including the one who was the fastest of the day in Beijing. Uh, Marijke Groenewoud. She did not win, because she skated in the B division. Groenewoud in the inner lane, and Joy Bone in the outer lane. In Beijing, Groenewoud skated 3.59.34, which was about two seconds faster than uh, Magna Wieklund. But she did have the advantage of the quarter star, of course. And Joy Bijna was fourth and fourth in the first two World Cups. Uh, quite consistent. Ready. Kunewout is not afraid to start up quickly. She's sometimes a little bit too quickly. Last week on the 5,000 meters, she started uh, a little bit too quickly and lost a lot in the end. Still skated podium there. 20.05 for Groenewoud and 20.59 for Bone. Groenewoud used to skate up until last season mostly 1,000 and 1,500 meters. Then decided to you know, just try 3,000 meters last season. Immediately qualified for the World Cups, did very well. And also skated the first 5,000 meters, also skated by far the fastest, well, faster than um, Schouten, I believe, currently has the first prize. Well, the Brigida was still faster here, but she lost a lot in the end. And now Grunewald is one of the best all-rounders in the world, and does not really skate 1,000 meters anymore. Still does every now and then, but that's not... Not her focus. Her focus is mostly 1500 for 8000. And she can also skate very good in the 5000. 
31.5 and 31.5 for both. Keeping it low. Joy Bono um, was world champion junior in 2018. Then had quite a bit of trouble getting to the top of the Netherlands and the top of the world in her first few years as junior, as senior. But last season, she kind of broke through and uh, qualified for the World Championships for the first time, placed fourth, and did very well. She's continued that this season. 32-11 for Bijna, 32-39 for Groenewoud. Both quite a bit faster than Schouten. And Bona had the little bit of a faster lap. Groenewoud can skate good 5k's. Better than Bona usually, so there she might have something extra in that tank. In the fuel tank. And she shows that off here. 32.4. Against Bona's 32.7. Now comes the difficult part. Irene Schouten did slow down fairly quickly at the beginning, but then kept it steady. And that's her secret. But the question is, can keep Marijke Groenemout? It's steady. There's a little bit of a lead on Bona now. Two laps more to go. 32.98. Loses a little bit on Schouten. And Schouten had two more uh, laps of about 32.8, 32.7. And Bona had 33.3 here. So Groenewoud has to skate laps of about 33.5.6 on average now to take first place. I think she wants more, of course. Than just first place. 33.2, has 1.6 seconds left over. She should be able to make that. If she skates a lap under 34.2 seconds, that will be enough. And it looks like she will be able to do that. Obviously, she's tired, but the way she moves still looks decent. Good enough to uh, take that first spot. And she does, 4.07.03 and 4.10.09 for Bona. Which is exactly the same time as Elisa Dull skated. The four Dutch skaters are currently in places 1, 2, 3 and another 3 or 4, depending on if the thousands and milliseconds are the same. And then Lollebrie, Dida and Laura Hall. Now, I will be very surprised if either of the next two skaters can uh, beat Grunewouds or Schoutenstein. Because both of those times are faster than their personal bests. And their personal bests were skated at rinks that are faster than this rink. But that does not mean that they can't skate a good race on their own level. In the inner lane, Bin Yu Yang. Chinese skater, just 21 years old. And in the outer lane, Yuna Onodera. Bin Yu Yang has a personal best of 408, and Onodera has a personal best of 410. The Chinese skaters, well, the Chinese Skating Association this year has said they really want to invest in those longer distances. And you can already see the result. Uh, Mai Han skated some very good races, got podium last uh, World Cup on 3K. 26, 27 for the skaters. 20.6, uh, 20.7. 20 
Um, and with the men, you can also see that uh, that in effect. We already have a new Chinese national record on the 5,000 meters men. Almost also on the 10,000 last uh, week. So towards the next Olympics in Italy, they're very much looking to improve on that, which is very nice to see. And they both start off with exactly the same lap, 31.86. Asian countries and long distances is not usually a combination that works very well. There are exceptions, of course. Um, you had Miara on a Japanese skater on the 5,000 meters um, all the way back in the late 90s. She was very good. You had Sung Hoon Lee from uh, South Korea, Olympic champion 2010 on the 10K, of course. 32.7 from Onodera, 33.0 from Bin Yu Yang. They're losing a lot compared to Marijke Groenewoud, but that's what we could expect. But especially Chinese skaters, you rarely ever see do well. So it's really nice to see them actually doing well. They've improved a lot. Thirty-three point four for Onodera, thirty-three point seven for Bin Yu Yang. They're cruising for times about four between four fifteen and four twenty. So still a little bit faster than Laura hold it. But behind Lola Brigida. And Onodera has a little bit of a lead. But Bin Yu Yang has a significantly faster lap. And will probably take the lead from here on. 33.4 to 33.9. The 3K is long enough that you can see the, really see those differences in skating style start off quick end off quick stuff like that you can really see that well and Bin Yu Yang does well it's a lead it's a hundredth of a second he keeps it under 34 seconds still Onodera doesn't quite manage to do that so we've got about one and a half laps to go And Bin Yu Yang does take a little bit of a bigger leash. She's got a few meters. Wins a few more tenths in this lap. Nearly half a second, 34.3 to 34.8. Final times will be about 4.17. Looks like Bin Yu Yang is really giving it her all and is trying to snake a really good final lap. Let's see what she can do. Sometimes it looks fast, but isn't just because they're so incredibly tired, but sometimes it is fast. Yang does win the race. And goes to a time of 4.16.10 and 4.17.83 for Onodera. The final up above 36 seconds. That's Maike Groenewoud. Still in first place. Although the next pair could change that. Because we have Magdalena Chichon, who is uh, skating for the home team here in Poland against ja the Japanese champion Momoka, Momoka Horikawa in the inner line. And Horikawa actually managed to get podium on the first World Cup. Second place, just 20 years old. Chishchon didn't quite manage that. This was 13th and 10th, so steady in the A division. 
Urikawa is holder of the Japanese junior national records on the 3K and the 5K. As I mentioned, it's rare to see a skater from Asia do well on the longer distances. But Horikawa is really focusing on the 3K and the 5K, which, again, is very nice to see. She's skating a good 1500 this season so far as well. Which a lot of those skaters can do from the long distances. Irene Schouten does it sometimes well. Martina Sablikova even went, got third at the Olympics on the 1500. And on the men's side you see it as well with people like Sven Kramer, Peter Goost. First lap, 31.90 for Horikawa, 32.10 for Chisjom. If you're wondering whether Chisjom's last name with all the Z's and the Y's and the C's would be worth a lot of points in Scrabble, it wouldn't be. Because in Poland, the Z, the Z is only worth a single point. There are a lot of Z's in the Polish language. 32.6 from Horikawa and 33.3 for Chisjom. The ISU is comparing with uh, first place, which is a little bit useless. They're quite a bit behind that. So I'm going to compare these for the next passage with Lola Brigida and Binyu Yang's times. Let's see where they are there. Bin Yu Yang had a split time of 1.59.36 here, and Horikawa is ahead of that. And Chishchon is a little bit behind it. Lola Brigida currently 5th place with 4.11. Was quite a bit faster than that, but she did start off very quick. And Horikawa extends her quite significant lead. 33.4 and 34.6. Horikawa keeps it steady. Still faster than Bin Yu Yang. Two more laps to go. And Horikawa 33.6. Very nice race, keeping it very steady. And 35.5 for Chishchon, who loses quite a bit now. Lulubidjida's time is probably a bit out of reach. 4.11. But Horikawa is looking to beat Bin Yu Yang's 416. Thirty-three point seven loses a tiny little bit every lap, but overall keeps it very steady. That's usually what she does. This John is losing a lot now, thirty-six point twenty. Well, about half a lap more to go for Horikawa. She's winning a little bit every lap on Lola Brigida. It's not enough now. And final time is 4.13.75. Good enough for sixth place so far. And Tishjon 4.22.70. Into ninth place. Three more pairs to go. And in the first pair of those three, we have in the inner line Ragne Wiklund. Leader in the World Cup won both three Ks. And with Schouten skating not the race of her life, Wiklund is the favorite to win this. 
against Canadian Ivany Blondin, who skates nearly every distance possible. Blondin, two times top ten. So not quite podium. She's won a World Cup on 3K before, um, which was in Nagano in late 2019. Not doing so yet this season, but steady top 10. 20.2, 20.3. Wiklund definitely not the fastest opener, and neither is Bonda. If you want to go to really fast openers, you go to 19.2, 19.3. People have done that before. Hedda Berg's my fastest ever, 18.7. That was also in Calgary, which is a much faster ring. First lap, 31.1, 31.4. What you usually see Wiklund do is she starts off a bit cautiously, then speeds up a little bit in the middle and then loses quite a bit in that final lap. And that's also exactly what you see um, for a track record which so far she's just a tiny little bit behind. So we'll keep comparing to that for now. Track record had 123.09. Both skaters are a bit behind that, but less than a second. 32.1 for Wiklund, 32.3 for Blondin. The conditions don't seem good enough for that though. They seem a bit slower than they were um, last year when the track record was set. I would be very surprised if he didn't manage this to uh, do that, to accelerate to that. But so far Blondin is taking the lead actually. 32.3, Wiklund ever so slightly faster in the lap, 32.2. If she wants to get close to the track record, she has to go back into the 31 laps uh, now. 31.5, which I don't think will happen, but she is taking a lead here. She was a little bit behind, now she's uh, a few meters ahead, so looks promising. 32.1, and it's Londin who loses quite a bit, 33.1. Wiklund does accelerate a little bit, which is usually what you see from her. Two more laps to go. Grunewald had three minutes and 25 hundredths of a second here, which Wiklund is actually still a little bit behind. But Grunewald did start off very fast and then lost a bit in the end, quite a bit. So if Wiklund keeps this steady, which she usually does until the very last moment, then she'll be able to take that lead. One more lap to go. Grunewald had three, 33.49. And Wiklund is ahead of that now, with 32.6. It all comes down to the final lap. Bonin is losing a lot now, 34.93. Grunewald had a final lap of 33.5. So if Wiklund uh, skates faster than that, she'll go into the lead. And I think, ooh, she is completely wrecked, but it is enough, just about. Tiny little slither, 406.96. She goes into the lead, even if Blonde, 414.61. I may have judged Irene Schouten's race a little bit harshly. Um, at the start. I said it was uh, not one of her best races, but looking at what uh, Wiklund has done, what Grunewald has done, looks like the conditions are really, really tough. Still 
still remains to be seen whether Schouten gets to the podium there. She's currently in third place. And here we have Martina Sablikova, who has been winning on stuff since 2006. Against Valerie Maltais, who uh, this season improved a lot and became one of the, well, maybe the best Canadian skater on the 3K. And Martina Sablikova, well, she's, she's just there again every year. This is her 19th year in a row that she's top five of the world on the 3K and the 5K throughout the season. It's astonishing how good she is. She is. And she won the World Cup on the 5K last week, because why not? It's absolutely incredible. And a week, uh, two weeks before that, she was second and on the 3K as well. Starts off with a 31.86, quite cautiously. Opener above 21 seconds as well, which we don't see her do that often. But as you get older, she is 36 years old, as you get older, you do lose a little bit of that flexibility, a little bit of that power. Uh, a little bit of that explosivity. But your stamina, your stamina can actually even a little, improve a little bit in some cases. And so Blikova does take the lead. 32.38. 1.3 seconds behind um, Wicklund. Wicklund is li did lose a little bit in that last lap, as is usual for her, so that's where Sabikova could win a little bit of time. It's tough though, because Wicklund kept those lap times really, really steady. Thirty-two point nine, yeah. Thirty-two point seven from Maltin, who is actually faster in the lap. So if we look at uh, fourth place, which is Joy Bone with four ten. Let's compare with that, because that seems roughly the time that they're both heading for. Joy Bona had a split time of 2.27 here, but lost a lot. And Martina Sablikova accelerates. With 32.6, and Malta 33.1. Wiegland is probably a little bit out of reach, but top four so far. The 4.010 from Joy Bona is possible if Sablikova keeps those lap times down. Thirty-two point nine. Ooh, Malta accelerates as well, back into the thirty-two. Also thirty-two point nine. So Blikova manages to stay under thirty-three seconds for two more laps. Then she does go into fourth place. Bona had three thirty-five point four six here, and Dull, who had exactly the same final time, was a few tenths slower. 33.1 It's still possible if she skates 33.1 or faster in that final lap She beats Bona and Dull who are currently in fourth and fifth place with 4.0.10.09 So 33.1 we're heading for 4.10 Can she stay under that under that magical limit? for the umpteenth time in her career. And she can't, but very close though. 4, 10, 40, and 4, 12, 33 for Malte. One more pair to go. Which is Sonne in het Holt, Dutch skater, against Mei Han. The Chinese skater, who 
against all odds, you might think, are actually teammates. They both skate for um, Team Gold, which is Johan de Witt's team. So on the inner lane, Sanne and Holf. On the outer lane, Mayhan. Mayhan was third last World Cup over the 3K. Sanne and Holf, um, eighth and seventh in the two World Cups, so very consistent. Sanne and Holf is mostly a 5K skater, but she has focused a little bit more on the 3K as well, because there are not a lot of 5Ks in the season. So if you don't go into the World Cup, um, season into the World Cups in a season, then you, you don't skate a lot of races. And it was just a few tens, but she did manage to qualify for it. She was a few tens faster than Antoinette Rijpma de Jong. Ooh, this is a difficult... Ooh, that is gonna work. In that Hof accelerates, managed to go ahead of Han. The outer lane does have uh, priority. But they solved it gracefully. My Han improved a lot this season, was never a candidate for the podium, and has now skated podium on both the 1500 and the 3K already this season in the World Cup. She was already steady, you know, frequently top 10 before. Never the podium. So Johan de Witt's influences have shown themselves again. He's a very good coach. Of course with Mir Takagi as well, who's winning all the 1500s this season. 32.4 for Han, 32.9 for Inet Hof. Han is not that far behind Wiglund, less than a second. And in Hof is a little bit further behind that, but she did lose a lot, a lot in that first 200 meters. That's not her strength. That's why she's mostly a 5k skater. Mayhan, 32.79, loses a little bit more on the Ragnar Wiglund now. And I'll be comparing her times with those of Irene Schouten, who is in third place. So, for the next passage, which is uh, the 1800 meters, Irene Schout had 229.4. And Han is behind that with a 33.0. And it held a 33.6. I think a miracle needs to happen if, uh, if my Han will want to go to the podium. We've seen before, miracles are possible, though not very probable. Thirty-three point four for Han. Now, podium is out of view, out of reach. In it, whole quite a bit behind that. Thirty-three point nine. Let's see how she's doing uh, for that fourth place, which would still be very strong for her. Which is currently held by Bona and Dull, both at the same time, although Bona seems to be a little bit faster in the milliseconds. Fourth place is also not going to happen, she's losing too much. She just heard a siren, my apologies. An ambulance drove by. Right, the finish for Mai Han. Will she get into the top 10? She will, 9th place, 4.12.77. And in it all, 4.16.88. And so, Ragnar Wiklund wins again for the third time in a row on the 3K. I'm 
I'm not sure what she's writing on here, but it might be the final times. Looked like it. Marijke Groenewoud, who had uh, the fastest time of the day in Beijing, uh, second place here, just a few tenths behind Wiklund. And about a second after Wiklund, we have Irene Schouten with 407.74. I did not expect that time to be good enough for the podium, if I'm honest. But conditions seem to be very tough today. We did see that on the 1000 meters as well, although in the B divisions times were surprisingly good. And here we see the results. Wiklund, then Groenewoud, Schouten, Beune, Dulf, four Dutch skaters. Sablikova still sixth, very good for considering how long she's been participating. And Blonde, Young in the top, Anadera, Chishchon, and at the very end, Laura Hall. In the World Cup standings, Ragnar Wiklund still first. And in fact, she hasn't been beaten on the 3K for over a year now. So, that was the women's 3K. We have one more distance to go today, which is the mass start. Um, which will start in about uh, 15 to 20 minutes. And we'll have a little bit of ice preparation in between. So, we'll be back then. I will be back. The stream will continue.
with us, we have some gifts for you. DJ, proszę się pozyskać głośniej. The prize giving ceremony for 3000 meter women. The medals and prizes will be presented by the ISU representative, Mr. Tron Espeli, and the president of Polish Speed Skating Federation, Mr. Rafał Pataro. The third place and bronze medal goes to representative of the Netherlands, Irene Schouten. Second place and 
moi drodzy, słyszymy, tańczymy go tak, raczej znamy, wszyscy lubimy i razem ze skatekiem, z naszą maskotką, możemy śmiało do tej piosenki troszkę podrygiwać, żeby się troszkę jeszcze rozprzeć.
In a few minutes, we'll have the men's mall start, and here are the World Cup standings. Bart Swings, in first place, Giovannini. Second place, Bart Holwerf. Third place, Van Wenger, Bosker, Di Stefano, Lubino, Jung, Janiki, and Chef Huren. Mall start is obviously a little bit different than your usual race. It's a pack race, all 21 skaters. Usually 20, but I've been told that due to a mistake, it's 21. Uh, all 21 skaters are skating at the same time. And it's 16 laps. Every four laps, there's a little sprint, and the first three of those sprints, after four, eight, and 12 laps, you can get a few points. Three, two, and one for the first, second, and third. But in the final sprint, you get the big points, and Whoever comes over the final line after 16 laps, first always wins, second always second place, third always third place. So for the podium of this result, for this event, it doesn't matter who wins the sprint, but in the World Cup standings, and whether you move down to the B division, um, the, those points do have an effect. So especially for skaters who are not the best sprinters, it's often a good option to go for those points when others aren't trying. See if they can get a little bit of points. We've had three mass starts so far in the World Cup. First was won by Bart Holwer for the phenomenal fast uh, sprint lap. The second was won by Andrea Giovannini, um, who escaped with uh, Daniele Di Stefano, his Italian brother, who was second. And the last one was won very impressively by Marcel Bosker, who escaped, took a big lead with four other skaters. And then um, the group, the pack, chased them down and passed everyone except Bosker, who had enough to still put out a little bit of a sprint and just enough to stay ahead by about half a second, which was very exciting to see. A lot of different things can happen in the Mass Star. Sometimes it's not that exciting throughout the race and the pack mostly stays together. But, especially in the men's Mass Starts, quite often you do see um, that a few people at some point halfway the race do try to escape. And fairly often succeed for quite a few laps. And sometimes that gives you very unexpected winners. Uh, Felix Reinen, one of the two Dutch uh, German skaters here, won in a way like that once. Bart Sphinx, though, the Belgian here on the right, is mostly a sprinter. Starts off quite slow. The time ultimately doesn't matter, it's just who wins. And the first lap is just a warm-up lap. You're not really allowed to do anything. You're not allowed to place any attacks. Or, you know, anyone who's in the back right now is not allowed to suddenly go to the front of the pack. Just to get everyone a bit up to speed. Mark Swing's taking the lead. The two Italians behind him. With Giovannini, cap number two. Stefano with six. And there was the starting gun. For the 15 remaining laps. And immediately, one of the German skaters. If I can see his cap number, I'll be able to see who it is. That is Felix Mali. Goes for it. With number 18. And has a little bit of a lead, but is on his own. And on your own, it's incredibly difficult to keep that lead. We skied all the way on the inside here, by the way. No lane changes, but not even um, a warm-up lane, because we skate in that warm-up lane. So the turns are very tight, and so people who have experience with short track skating, like Sun Lee, Lee, who is in the pack here, they have experience with that, that helps a lot. And Mali is uh, oh, taking a little bit of a lead. But there, um, Ulle Klaif and Johansson are 
working on closing the gap. Swings in there as well. That's currently Johansson in second place. And he takes the first sprint lap, first sprint points. Lap of 24.8 seconds for, uh, well, not for Johansson, I think, but I think one of the sprinters. You can't compare those to actual 400 meter laps because we skate on the inner lane, inner, inner lane the entire time. And there go Ulrich Live and Swings on Adventure. But will they actually go or will they just skate ahead for a bit and then slow down? Well, Swings is keeping up the speed. Doing quite a good job. The Americans are leading the pack. Chaprin and McDermott must be. And Swings is slowing down. He's sensing that he won't be able to keep this up. The entire race, it's way too long. It's not his strength. His strength is the sprint. And there he's in the pack again with uh, Chepron in the front now. And Sun Lee Lee in third place, and we're going for the second sprint lap. So the only one wants points, and it looks like Antoine Gélinas Beaulieu, the Canadian on the outside, does want those points. The Dutch skaters are still keeping their legs, still not doing a lot. Waiting for the end. So that's Jelinas Beaulieu with the sprint points. And then behind that, Chapron, I believe, and then McDermott, Mosbury. In third place. No, all the way around, the Americans. And there goes Felix Reinen along with three other skaters. Marcel Bosker, Peter Michael, and Mathieu Belloir, the Frenchman. And they have, they have a little bit of a lead. And if you're with a group like this, that has a chance. So if they keep up the speed, Belloir in the lead now. Although the pack is closing in. Yes, Bart Swings, who often does this, closes the gap. And this escape, again, did not succeed. But good that they tried. Good that they tried. And very good positioning for Marshall Bosker as well, to be in that group. And the speed is high. And there's the bell for the third sprint, uh, in between sprint, after the 12th lap. Speed remains very high, even though the pack is still together. And Peter Michael is currently leading in the race. And then we have Michael, Beloir and Bosker battling it for the sprint point. And is Bosker who takes them? Beloir second and Michael third. And it looks like Bosker wants to keep up that speed and try to, try to escape. On his own, that's very brave. He's keeping up the speed as well for Bart Holwer, so that a lot of the others tie out, tire out. Bart Holwer safely within the pack, getting a draft from others, not doing a lot. It's, it, it's a lot easier to keep up the speed if you're in the pack. And Bart Holwer is the sprinter from the Netherlands. So when they're in this position, they're very good. Although Giovannini, the Italian, still has done almost nothing as well. And he also has a very strong sprint. And there we go again. And that is Gabriel Odor. Who's trying to escape the pack. 
and chasing is, I assume, uh, that's Timothy Louvineau, the other Frenchman. And there we also have uh, Antoine Gérard Bollier. And there we have Andrea Giovannini, the Italian, sitting well. Bart swings behind that. And Bart Holwer. We're in the final lap, 200 more meters to go. We're in the sprint. And there's Sung Hoon Lee as well. Giovannini has the lead. Giovannini has the lead. Can he maintain that lead or will Sung Hoon Lee take the win? Giovannini, Giovannini, Giovannini wins again. Wins his second mass start. After winning the second World Cup as well, he also wins the fourth here in Poland. Incredible final sprint from the Italian. Sung Hoon Lee, presumably second. I'm not entirely sure who was third, but I assume we'll see the finish again. We have quite a few escapes, people trying to escape, and a few that succeeded for two or three laps, but didn't quite manage to uh, get that definitive gap. Oh, my apologies, I must have seen that wrong. That was Jaewon Chung, the Korean. Not Sung Hoon Lee. I misread the cap number. And it is in third place. It's Bart Holwer. Beating out just swings. So that was the mass start. With Giovannini, then Jae Won Chung, who gets his first podium place of the season on the mass start. Also on the end of the distance. Um, third place, Bart Holwerf, podium again after winning the first one. And revenge for uh, falling down in the last one. And Bart Swings, uh, also a very good sprint. Just a tiny little bit behind Bart Holwerf is fourth. We have Wenger, Kikuchi, Jelinov, Bolio, who is with his points that he uh, grabbed with the sprints halfway the race. Bosker as well, three points. And Johansson, Nu de Kluif. And then Beloir, McDermott, Chaperon, Michael, Madar, all with some points. And then with no points. So who ended up at the back of the pack, all the way at the back, Felix Mali. Here we have the World Cup standings. Giovannini in first place, closely followed by Bart Swings. Then Bart Holwerf. Livio Wenger is doing very well. Jevon Chung, Marcel Bosker, Di Stefano. And that was it for today. It's some very exciting distances. And we'll be back tomorrow. At um, 2 o'clock in the afternoon local time. So Central European time. You can convert that to your own time zone. And I will also be doing the commentary then. So, until tomorrow, goodbye.
prize giving ceremony for Mustard Men. The medals and prizes will be presented by the ISU representative, Mr. Tron Espeli, and the president of Polish Speed Skating Federation, Mr. Rafał Pataru. The third place and bronze medal goes to representative of the Netherlands, Bart Hulwer. The second place, representative of Korea, Jay Won Chang. In the first place, and gold medal goes to representative of Italy, Andrea Giovannini. Gracias. 